Now back to Let's Chat with Tita Gracie, only here on V81 Radio. So we're back. This is Let's Chat with Tita Gracie, the very initial broadcast from the South Station of V81 Radio Worldwide. And today, our panelists are having a very energetic discussion on the topic of the day, which is the new normal and how communication leaders uh, of the Philippines are viewing the effect of the pandemic on the state of the landscape of Philippine communications. Uh, and right now, I'd like to invite uh, Rolly and Charlie. Are you both there? Yeah. Hello, Hello. Hi, Hello, guys. Um, I'd like to get your, uh, your ideas and your comments on what has been transpiring with the discussions. Okay. So for me, I think it was highlighted that the media was so different in each of the era. I mean to say the, the, the media during the time of the martial law to the time of the post revolution to the time of the 2000 uh, year and to the time of the internet, which is around 2006 to 2010. All of those changes are different from one another. It's because of the difference in values of the Filipino people. It has degraded. From the time being, martial law, which was a an act of values, from the time of the uh, uh, revolution, it was a very freehand values. So nobody defined it uh, ex explicitly, and uh, nobody claimed what should be done, what should define an, an, a very independent nation. So all those values are all conflicting with one another. During the time of 2000, we got the C Y generation. So they, they are the loose so what what is the video all about? And then comes the internet. We have the social media, and then the more that everything is cluttered. And now that they have the new normal, they don't know any more of the values that we are talking about. All those four generations have been swiped out because uh, there are no values to be talking about. And so now we are now facing the new normal that we are now starting a new slam. And sleep. So yes. How, yeah. Charlie, what do you think of this new normal of communications and how do you think V81 Radio is responding to it? Well, um, the discussions are very, you know, very good. The, the two things have come to my, to my uh, attention about the discussion and those were you know, the, the technology has grown so fast. The, the digital adoption, the social media actually came out so fast. Uh, even, you know, even the traditional uh, media and news business uh, really didn't uh, caught up. And governments are, are almost literally caught flat-footed. Um, the other thing is um, the commercialization. Just like Bill, mentioned earlier and, and Boyer, uh, commercialization actually kind of, oh, you know, probably not the good term, but it's it's more like they, it really put the quality down in a way on, on the, the most basic of all, say, uh, news uh, as a feed. They, the, uh, uh, because of that, it's, I think, you know, it really suffered. Uh, it degraded in a way, and somehow it, um, the credibility, the trust uh, uh, suffered in a way. Yes. And so, you, um, I understand that uh, what happened is that social media has filled a gap, a tremendous gap in terms of, um, conveying information in a very relevant and timely manner. And also as discussed earlier, Boyet raised a good point about the manner of delivery. You know, how the information is conveyed to the audience is also crucial. You know, sometimes the messenger is as important as the message. So Rolly, you have a feedback about that, about what, I, what my question also about how does V81 radio now become significant and become 
uh, relevant to the times. All right, so be the ones ready in terms of uh, platform. That's why we have this digital studio, and we welcome a lot of people to be with us. And of course, with our Tita Grace is one of our leaders here. <laughs> and then in terms of technology, we are also ready because we will now feed in the tech part with all the tech points and panels. And then for the content part, we'd like to touch base with boomers like uh, Tita Gracie, like us, with the white generation like Charlie, and then with the millennials like Erica, so that we can now put together all the insights with one another and then create a synthesis that will be good for the betterment of our Philippine country. Yes, I think uh, V81 uh, and the way we are now delivering uh, vital uh, information and having the right conversations is important. Yeah. We are now talking about issues that are relevant to Filipinos everywhere and also to people everywhere. So that relevance, that timeliness is important. And uh, since um, we have uh, very insightful communicators in our panel today, um, and we have, we're on our last 15 minutes of our show, I would like to invite each one now to um, deliver their part before uh, our show ends. So Rolly, Charlie, do you have any other things to add to to um, your synthesis of what transpired in our conversations with our guests. Well, well actually, I'd like to probably add something about uh, V81 with, uh, like the one that Ray was was explained by Rolly. Um, we V81 is envisioned to become far more relevant. Uh, we are playing on a you know on a digital, uh, using digital and social media. As, as our platform, as a, as an access, but more importantly, we're we're trying to get, go back to the roots of how media used to be. You know, a level of professionalism, a level of truth that the the uh, the, the people who speaks behind the digital camera are, are the ones that are credible. They are uh, not only professional, but they're very competent. We have. Uh, every show, everything we we will be doing, not not necessarily just for the sake of entertainment, but there would be formats. And just to probably point out what Boyet also mentioned, there would be the reason why V81 will be expanding uh, into other places is to is to capture the the essence or or prob it's not just the news, but more of how the community actually goes about their business, their interest, their passion, their form of entertainment, and what's what's relevant for them. And that's why there would be more stations of V81, not only in the Philippines, in a geographical area, but also where the Filipinos are. So that, that means simply where uh, the OFWs are and where our Kababayans are, V81 would be going there. That's wonderful news for our listeners because I'm sure that as we gather momentum and as the days go along and as the new formats of V81 are rolled out, our audiences will learn to appreciate our vision, which we would like to share with them. Because I know that uh, the media landscape is changed and we are one of the newest players on the block. And I look forward to that. And as we go into the final 15 minutes of our show, um, gentlemen, thank you. And I'd like to call back our all our guests uh, to join me with uh, each one giving their parting shots, messages before we finish the show. So uh, I'd like to uh, ask our only roast tonight <laughs> among the thorns. I hope uh, I was. Yeah. <laughs> What's your final shot? What's your final message? Uh, well, actually, when the lockdown happened, Boots? Uh, uh, Gracie, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, uh, when this lockdown happened, uh, my girlfriends and I, okay, we got into video call, video con, uh, conference calling. 
Uh, it seems that there is a syndrome that is now pervasive because, well, I was talking to, to these women friends and, you know, they're not, they're extraordinary women and they're strong, they're brave, they've brought up children, uh, they're business women, they're career women, very opinionated, but we all found out that we we're feeling this thing with we felt weepy. We felt that we were. We wanted to cry at the most unusual moments. If we weren't of a certain age, we would have thought that we were pregnant. Okay, but we're we're way past that. But you know what? Uh, the great thing is, one of my former clients shared on his FB wall that this feeling. There's actually a name for it. And it's called anticipatory grief, okay? It's because we are in the middle of this pandemic. We all have a sense of an impending loss. So in case any of your listeners right now, any of our friends are going through the same thing, it's normal. This is anticipatory grief. And, you know, you can manage it. It's, it's to, to live in the present. That's that's what I got got from my readings. We have to live in the present because, well, life doesn't stop. We still have to, you know, if we can't stop. If we stop, we're dead. <laughs> so, so even if we crush the flowers, the spring shouldn't, you know, stop. So that's it. I just want to point out to everybody who's feeling the same way, everybody who's been anxious, everybody who's had insomnia or has been feeling weepy, if you're not pregnant and you're not menopausal, okay, then it's anticipatory grief. And you can learn about it, you can Google about it, and it helps that, you know, we have technology that we can be able to be, to see each other face to face because we need to still talk to each other and this is good yes Congratulations. And this, this new normal of communications involves using platforms like this yes. where in our separatedness we can get together via technology so how about great. you bill what's your parting shot well uh alvin toffler uh wrote that this is the third revolution in the history of mankind the information revolution where uh, the citizenry now uh, has its own power in information. We have the responsibility, being trained professionals, to educate the public on how to use uh, this power. And I think in the near future, the next trend you're going to see is more communicating like this. You know, families, uh, civic groups, uh, communities communicating in this manner, and the audience will start to break up into uh, more and more uh, minute, uh, interested parties. And that's really where the direction is going to be. It's going to become uh, more more evenly distributed, more democratized. And the question is how we in the mainstream media will be able to stay on top of that and keep people informed, educated, and give them direction. Okay, thank you, Bill. And uh, how about you, Boyet? We'd love to hear your parting shot. Well, for me, the responsibility of our of our leaders, of our educators, most especially, to to train and educate our students, our young people, how to be more responsible with the gifts that they've been given right now. Uh, the internet is not a toy. It should not be treated like a toy. It should not be impressed upon them that it is a toy. It is a very, very dangerous and educational tool as well. We should have started educating them the moment the internet exploded. But unfortunately, it was seen as a toy. So ngayon, ang tingin sa telepono, ang tingin sa internet, sa pagkakaroon ng pagkakataon upang mag-live sa internet ay laro. Ang pagko-comment sa Facebook ay tinitingnan na laro lamang. Hindi po. Our educators, the people that have the responsibility to educate and, and train our young people have to make the extra effort to really educate them, to train them how to use it properly and with accountability yes 
Thank, Thank you, you very much, point. Boyet. Nice <laughs> point. And then... It really helps that we're all friends tonight, and uh, this has really given me a lot of. Uh, it is a tremendous blessing on Easter Day to share my Easter with you, people, with you guys, with the guests, and I really thank you from the bottom of my heart. V81, thanks, Boots. Bill Velasco, Boot Season, and Boyat Season. Thank you so much for sharing this valuable Easter with us tonight because, mm -hmm. as we all agree, yes, it's love, guys. It's about love. Oh. <laughs> Giving us Korean. <laughs> Easter. Easter is about hope, and Easter is about love. And uh, I think it's it's a great parting message that we are now going to share with our audiences out there that we must care for one another. Let's be careful. Let's be mindful. Uh, this powerful tool called the cell phone you know, can be used for greater good. And that makes each and every one a communicator. When you have this tool, it's important that we use it with care, with a lot of respect, especially during this time of pandemic. Um, and the power of communications is now the power that everybody has at the at their palm. So we must be, we must learn, we must continue to educate our audiences what it can do, what it should not do, and how it can contribute to the greater good, which I believe is something that us communicators must always look at. At the very heart, that what is the greater good of being in media, being in communication, being in mass communications, being a responsible broadcaster, being responsible marketing communications professional. We have to care. We have to have heart. And uh, on that note, Rolly, Charlie, some parting shots. Well, first of all, uh, Easter, give us the renewal that we need as Christians because Rolly is here. Easter Sunday, and uh, for me, values dictate what society we have, and the military media has the responsibility to reshape it. So I throw the ball not only to our audience, but to my core media broadcaster and journalist as well. Yes. Charlie? Well, well for me, I'm... Okay, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just happy it's not not only for uh, Easter, but your show would be the first of of B eighty one Radio South Manila, and it's like a you know a a very good start. We're off to a great start, and being digital as it is, I mean I would have to admit also as well that this COVID pandemic has brought B eighty one at the forefront. We we probably have been operating like digital and somewhat traditional in a way together. But now since because of, of uh, the ECQ, the quarantine, and, and people cannot come to, to the station anymore, we have, we were forced to become like this. And so far so good for the past three weeks, we have been rolling out programs and, um, you know our our mentors from the media and and uh, the the journal uh, the the news agencies have, have put us and supported us in putting the right format uh, to for us our to to bring our business moving forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Charlie. I think we we have some comments from Facebook. Yeah, first of all, we'd like to greet uh, Mani Tonog Banwa, tuning in. Felicita <laughs> Kuwa Roque from Isabela. <laughs> Maria Pena Kahima from Japan. Hello. <laughs> wow. And then Papa Gio from California with a new tag, wow. Hope Not Alone. Hi. I mean, that's me. Mm. <laughs> And then Abdo Amu Ali. Oh, hey, I love you. Kiko <laughs> Bonito, I agree with Bill. Instead of comparing with other countries, look at the best side of things. 
We don't have a meter for those people who have been saved and harmed because of the measure we're doing right now, like social distancing and chat. All we see are numbers of casualties. We all do our part responsibly. It's the best that we can offer. Good deal. Everybody agree with you. Earl Cezanne Miguelas, Robbie Vejensha said hello. Okay, so that's it. And then I, I'd like to read other others. Chica Mabansan, Archie Balidoya, Lee White Cook from Malaysia is my good friend watching. He's the vice president of Daikin Global. Ruth Kanahan Vargas from Bacola, Joy De Castro, Bans Molina, my daughter, Jay Ang is watching. And many others, the papa Wow. Uh, first of all, I'm so thankful. Uh, a special shout out to Manny Tonog Banwa, who's all the way in Ra City. And uh, I'm so happy that you made time this Easter to join us tonight. And to all our listeners from all over the world, um, I hope that tonight uh, you will ship, you will. Um, uh, you have learned something and you like what you listen to and I'm sure that our guest panelists are also honored by having you around and we are so honored once again I thank you Boots, Sison, you. Boots, Boyat, Salamat, Arigato, thank you, my friend. <laughs> 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 Bill, Bill, maraming maraming salamat and uh, of course uh, to Charlie and Rolly, thank you once again for this wonderful opportunity uh, and to have uh, to make the show Let's Chat with Tita Gracie a reality. And to conclude tonight's uh, initial broadcast, um, first of all, I really have to thank the guy up above because he made this all happen. And on an Easter Sunday at that, so it's a good sign. We're off to, the, we're off to a great start. And uh, stick around with us, and maybe in the coming weeks, we're going to have more insightful conversations, more educational conversations that matter, conversations that will touch people. Oh, <laughs> I'm happy. Oh, and, of course, <laughs> um, and of course, uh, we welcome. Uh, corporations to come with us, to partner with us as we move forward. We would love to help you bring your relevant messages to our audiences. And of course, if there are any institutions out there, whether it's private NGOs, artistic institutions, government institutions that would like to be part of Tita Gracie moving forward, chat with me, chat with us, because I'm sure that we're going to have a great chat and our audiences will love it. With that, I'd like to thank everybody. Good night. Yay. See you all next Sunday. Yay. Bye. 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 Leading personality, representative insights, relevant current issues all together in a meaningful and delightful conversations as your social barometer. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Sunday, 6 p.m. Hosted by Breakthrough Millennial Boomer Gracie Venezuela. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Only here on V81 Radio. Tulus Pinoy, Tatap Pinoy The Future of Radio This is your All Hits, All Pinoy Internet Radio Station This is V81 Radio Worldwide Ito ang paborito ng bawat Pilipino Basta All Hits, All Pinoy, Manalo Merong kwentong iyakan at tawaan na Kahit nasaan ka man ito'y mapapakinggan Oh, oh, Radio, radio.